So moving on, we've got to think about the players to watch this season. Yeah, we um, tried something different. So to kind of uh, help with especially new people, hopefully getting familiarized with the Virsliga, we um, um, did a monumental <laughs> task of, of narrowing down the youngest professional league in Europe to top 10 players to watch. And, and this doesn't mean that these are the best 10 players. It doesn't mean that these are the only 10 players. Yeah. In fact, it's absolutely horrible doing the spreadsheet. Yeah, it's, it's one, one of the more difficult things. And as you say, it's the youngest, it's got the youngest players in, it's the youngest uh, league in Europe. So, I mean, it, it, it demonstrates the huge potential in this league. And, you know, hopefully there'll be some stars emerging this season, um, so going to some big clubs, uh, playing some Champions League football, but there were some really exciting, like doing this review, looking through all the players, um, thinking about last season, the players that shone, the players that like started off really well, dipped and then went, uh, picked Spain. up their form. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, it was really exciting. So it's there's a good selection here. Um, a little bit disappointed. Not all my players were selected, but same. But I mean, it, it's so it's a list by committee, list by committee, which yeah. makes it uh, problematic by default. But but so these are the ten players to maybe get you started. You know, they they come from different teams. Not too many. It's not like one from each, which maybe is how we should have approached it. But you know, to get you started with the league, or maybe um, highlight some names that are otherwise not as visible, we have these ten players to. Watch, you know, for now at the very yeah. Least. I I think we can do a uh, uh, mid-season uh, review on on the best youth talent or something. I'm sure we'll come yeah. up with a good content plan, uh, particularly as this is such an important topic for the league. Definitely. So, in terms of goalkeepers, we have none, and there's a reason for that. Last season, none of the goalkeepers were stable enough. Uh, there was a lot of rotation. Not one team had a starting stable goalkeeper. So while, again, there are goalkeepers that are tremendously uh, interesting and with lots of potential, none of them are included here. So, uh, tough luck. Yeah, yeah. We have two defenders, though. Two defenders. Yeah, some very exciting defenders. And um... So we have Walter Spurs, who is only 18. He is a Latvian central defender, and he plays for Yelga. Now, he's a little bit of a, uh, uh, a gamble for us to nominate him as a player to watch because he, I mean, he's so young. He was 17 last year. But he had a lot of, how many games did he play last season? He, he, I don't know. He played, he was a starting 11. Yeah, starting defender. 11. So I think for his age and his experience, yeah. like he's already got a season under his belt. Uh, and, you know, the, the manager put faith in him. It's, an, it's a big role, center, central defense. Yeah. So, And I hear that he's improved on his uh, weaknesses a lot in what, the preseason. What were his weaknesses? Primarily ball control. Okay, okay. Uh, and maybe uh, passing. And if we run the analytics, uh, like the Ben Griffiths website generously allows us to, you can see that he is elite level in terms of uh, heading and uh, yeah, yeah, kind of this defensive positioning, which is, again, 17 years old. The data is from when he's 17. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. That's impressive. Yeah, he's got a positive future, hopefully. And like Yelga, yeah, they, they, they turned up last season and to have an 18-year-old in your defense, yeah. uh, you know, demonstrates this guy's got some talent. Yeah. So he's one to watch. Another one is Nick Sleda. He's 19 this year, which I kind of thought he's older, but... Yeah, I've, I've watched him quite a lot last season. Uh, I think he's, he's got a good partnership with uh, the Valdez. Cup. Yeah, Valdez. Yeah, uh, he's he's a big lad for 19. Uh, he's he's quite technically talented. He's, he can distribute the ball really well. Uh, good passer. Uh, win some big headers as well. Probably could do a bit more muscle, but he's still developing. Um, but he, he slotted into the defence quite well. I think uh, playing with the, 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 the... He needs to get work with the wing-backs a little bit more. Um, but he can win any ball on a good day and he can, he, he, he can play a very good pass. 
think last season he you know he he, he matured and he can only get this better uh, this season he can only get better I yeah. believe and hopefully a national team debut maybe under the new coach the yeah we'll see we'll, we'll see, see how or, or at least a call up I think it'll be down to how Valmo turn up this season and whether he's motivated yeah. to you know yeah so he win has Valmir a central defender can't miss him on the pitch he uh, takes up half the screen. Yeah, yeah, two meters at 19. It's yeah. quite exciting. So then moving on to midfield, uh, one of the biggest signings, at least relatively speaking, is a Georgian uh, winger that we already mentioned earlier today, Lasha Odisharia, 21 years old, coming in from Dinamo Tbilisi to RFS, and allegedly RFS paid 400,000 euros for him, which I do not believe for a minute. Maybe it's with some extra clauses, but in any case, it's at least half that, which is for RFS who never pay for transfers. is very, very impressive. Yeah, he's a big pool of talent. I think today he he was the biggest he had the biggest impact in attack. He he <clears throat> he was able to take the ball from the halfway line, get it up the field. Uh, in the final third, uh, he was he was doing a good job taking on the defenders. Uh, he's he's got he's got a lot of skills in his bag, uh, and he, I think he'll he'll get a few more assists this season. But he, he, I was really sad to see him substitute today. I thought he was he was one of the best players on the pitch. So maybe he wasn't physically ready yet. We don't know. We'll see in the press uh, conference. But definitely one to watch. Um, right wing for RFS, left footed. Um, allegedly has a mean shot on him, although we are yet to see that. Yeah, yeah, that was the big problem today. There weren't enough. There weren't enough tests on the goalkeeper from RFS. They were yeah. getting the ball uh, close to to the box, and then not really. Yeah, would be. Hopefully, we'll see him t- giving taking a bit more of a chance. But yeah. I mean, players are not encouraged to shoot as much in modern football, and the, the stats tell them to get it in the box and attempt to score. Uh, next is Eduard Dashkevich, who you will know if you follow us from last year. A very, very promising Latvian left attacking winger, plays for Riga FC and managed to actually play for Riga FC despite the, I don't know, maybe some of the greatest competition uh, in, in the league for positions. Yeah, I saw him quite a lot last season. I think he's a good player. He can be hit and miss. Sometimes he can turn up and take on any player and get the ball past them. Other times he can just switch off and uh, get frustrated. And the more he gets frustrated, the the more mistakes. In, he, he, he seemed to lose the ball quite a lot last season, um, but also did some really magical stuff on the pitch as well. So uh, he's, he's, he's got a football brain on him and I think he'll, he'll do some good stuff this season. I think he's an exciting prospect. He was a breakout last year. Yeah, he debut in the national team. National team. So now it's time to grow. I think he had a good game um, for the national team, and they subbed him. For, or they brought him on. I think against Armenia, he, he had a really good game, possibly. But yeah, hopefully he'll, he was one of the more exciting national players last season. He's not very typically Latvian player. He's quick and technical, and um, hopefully a sign of uh, things to come. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's yeah. I mean, he's he could do a bit more muscle mass sometimes. He can yeah. be pushed off the ball. That's but, true. He's a small guy, but he's 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 got some good skills and uh, he's got a good pass as well. Next one is Osenu Niang, also Riga FC left winger. Uh, he's one of the older, uh, actually tied for oldest uh, player to watch in our list. Twenty two years old from Senegal. Um, very dangerous, quick, aggressive winger. Last year missed most of the season due to injury. So hopefully we get to see more of him. Uh, definitely lots and lots of potential there. Yeah, he was very exciting today. Uh, he held up the ball uh, really well. Um, he was able to uh, get hold of the ball and move it into space. Uh, really positive attacking player. Uh, I think he's got a, a few different parts to his game, but a really exciting, really exciting prospect. Yeah, and two caps for uh, Senegalese U23, so that's also nothing to shun. 
Uh, next is Lukas Vapne. Uh, followers of Latvian football will be familiar with this uh, character. Uh, a, uh, almost a face that associates with Meta in many respects. But uh, he is back to Valmiera this season. Probably for good. I genuinely don't remember if it's a loan or a move. He's only 20 years old. Also thought he's older. And uh, interestingly... In Meta, he started as an attacking midfielder, but now he seems to have requalified into something like a deep-lying playmaker slash defensive midfielder, which is a very interesting role for him. Yeah, so I I saw him quite a lot when he, uh, during his first loan to Valmira, and he had some really good um, attacking qualities, getting himself um, into the box from midfield, uh, very creative. Um, occasionally switches off, and but I mean last season he was he was really good for Meta, and he 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 was a, instrumental to to them getting results, uh, and I think he did well in his first season at Valmiera. I was a bit puzzled why they they didn't like attempt to sign him or keep him. Uh, so hopefully he's matured and he'll turn up and and get some game time at Valmiera and um, help them, you know. Take, tra- take, be able to transition from defense to attack a bit more. Yeah, yeah. Next is uh, one of my personal favorites, Adam Markiev, uh, a uh, Finnish defensive midfielder for RFS, 21 years old. Last year, I think, absolutely sensational. And, uh, well, from what we've seen today, uh, shows no signs of slowing down. Um, yes, defensive midfield is a position that's not tremendously popular in the modern game. Oh, I don't know. You've got Kante. You've got this one of the great positions. If, if you yeah. you get certain players that have can dominate and boss the stop all the attack, I think it's one. I think he's not there quite yet. He's yeah. more of a quick. Uh, so that's why he's paired with Panic so well. I, I think it's a it's a position that the league sometimes lacks, and like there's there's a lot of mistakes made from. Uh, midfield defensive errors sometimes, and yeah, hopefully the he, he should be a really exciting uh, prospect for RFS in the league. And definitely, so he's for sure someone to watch. Um, then another Latvian, Robert Smeltis, uh, twenty-one years old, left winger slash wide midfield. He's going to be in Grobenia this year. So if you have an, if you need another reason to follow Grobenia, well, Smeltis is there. Um, had a great season last year at Tukums and Liepaja. He, I think, is Liepaja property on loan to Grobinja, um, and he will definitely be orchestrating that team. You think he'll be essential to their survival chances? Absolutely. No okay. doubt about that. I'll watch out for him. Yeah. Uh, even in the Livonian Winter League, he's been, I think, pretty much the main scorer for them. Okay, interesting. At least the parts that I watched. Yeah. For, for Grobinia. Um, then in terms of strikers, we have two. So our <laughs> our scheme for next season in terms of players to watch is 2A2, which I think is a fantastic uh, lineup. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we have Arthur Kranzmanis, who is 20 years old, Latvian striker. Um, Auda property, unclear if he will stay in Auda. Last year was in Tukums, scored 10 goals for Tukums. Very dangerous player, has excellent vision can do an incisive pass like nobody's business and, of course, uh, scoring goals as well. Yeah, he's a bit of a poacher, can, can knows how to... Um, yeah. Knows where the goal is when he's given the chance. Definitely. Um, and uh, Reginaldo Ramirez, 22-year-old Brazilian, also Auda. Uh, this one will certainly stay there. Yeah, I, I think he's, he's a good, mature player already. Uh, he's physically... Uh, uh, Competitive, uh, so I, yeah, I think he can challenge any defender. And um, on his day, you don't want him to have the ball in the box. I think he's he's a good natural scorer. He's got a good head as well. He's he's, he's, he's just he, all round excellent, he's a good target man. So yeah, we'll, we'll see. We talked about him at length last season, and of course, uh, this isn't the first time we mentioned him today either. So I'm I'm genuinely very excited that he uh, signed, I guess, an extension with Alda. That he's gonna stay in Virsliga, uh, because it seems like when preparing this, remember I, I wrote you that looking at the data, yeah, yeah, it seems like 
the best strikers are leaving the league, either they're moving on or going on loan or whatever, and, and that seemed a bit disappointing. But but Ramirez staying, yeah, is great. So there's, I think, Audi have got a couple of exciting players that that they've signed. There's been, yeah, whether they, there's been enough replacements for for strikers, it's. Uh, Questionable, but the transfer window is not over yet. Oh, and they do have Kranzmanis, so yeah. If he stays, then you might have this duo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, th- I think we. I mean, we we put down some exciting strikers in our our list. Some didn't get quite mentioned. Um, yeah, there's the ha- Haitian Judy Stevenson, yeah. who's um, again first professional experience was supposed to be last year, but he suffered a knee injury. The two goals preseason that yeah. will be interesting. Yeah, so he seems like someone someone exciting, and then there's uh, other ones. But we'll so we have these top ten, and then we'll publish on social media kind of the extended list. But fundamentally, just you know, if you f- fancy a team, there's bound to be at least a handful of players to watch there. Just because of how the league is, yeah, and I think I think there's a lot of exciting young Japanese players in the league this yeah. season as well. Yeah. I think um, they've been the past three seasons having an important impact on on teams. I mean, you've got Valmira who who had two really good ones, uh, Yakota and uh, the other chap when they Mozinga, won the league. I think. Yeah, and uh, Tukum says even Yalgava had. Last year, yeah, they they, they were they essential yeah. essential parts to the team when the uh, to the team. So Arafes has Nagasawa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, hope he gets some league time because I'm, I'm a big fan of him. Yeah, well, we'll we'll see. No news on on going on loan yet. Yeah. So that's players to watch. Now you may be wondering, where do you watch Virs League? Do you know? Well, there's also there's a but few. You just options. watch it here. So. I mean, I'm <laughs> I'm I have to travel quite a lot, uh, so it's a bit easier to watch when I'm traveling than uh, in Latvia. But I've just acquired a TV, so I might might get up on the TV at the moment. But yeah, when I'm traveling, um, I can access the league a lot easier um, than online. But yeah, where 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 can you where, where do you typically watch it? So if you are abroad, uh, one football app is the place to go. It uh, has all Virs Liga games. Um, now, I'm a little bit unsure on whether you need a subscription for that or not. If you do, it's still 99 cents. So it's not uh, you know, 99 cents per month to watch 36 uh, times 5 games. Yeah, Virs Liga. I think it's a fair deal. Maybe yeah. 12, 12 euros is a healthy investment, yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah, for a good... Good but but you might season. not need even that, so it might just be part of the free package or whatever. I don't know because obviously I cannot watch since one football is geo blocked from here. So that's one option. Another option is to watch it through uh, Latvian channels, but for that you will be geo blocked. So unless you grab yourself a VPN and VPN yourself to either Latvia, Lithuania, or Estonia. Um, but if you do, then you just go to sportacenters.com and we will be putting up links for games and, and you just watch there with the commentary, even. One football is just a broadcast, no commentary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, YouTube, you can do occasionally the highlights, some good highlights. Highlights on YouTube, yeah. The Virus Liga YouTube um, account has the, highlights yeah, yeah, for the, everything. The league's ch- the league channel is, is, is pretty decent. Yeah. I think you can get You some. have uh, highlights for games, for each game, and you have press conferences. Uh, obviously, there are um, foreign coaches, so those will be in English. Um, and uh, it's it's a very interesting resource. But these are the two main avenues for watching. So one football app if you're abroad, uh, sportatcenters.com if you are in the Baltic states. And by all accounts, if you are in the Baltic states, then Virus League is the championship to be following. A hundred percent. As well, yeah. at least as well as your you know national one. Yeah, you got you got a great variety of everything in yeah. the league. It's, it's, and it's very competitive. Like I don't think many people expected RFS to win it in such a way last season. I mean, there, there aren't the drama. there aren't yeah, the drama. There aren't many leagues where it gets down to the final day. Um, 
uh, for the other t- for the leading team to go in. I mean, I think last time that happened in the Premier League was Manchester City when they first won the league. But it's a really exciting league and it's, it's very competitive. It's Here it happens every year, three years in a row now. Three years in a row, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, and then you've got this. I, I'm quite, I'm excited, excited about the lower league um, battles as well. Who's going to come out top there? I think there's there's some good teams that that can really, you know, yeah. who's going to go down? Last year it wasn't as exciting because there was Supernova who were obviously yeah. going to yeah, be yeah. number ten very early in the season. Yeah, they didn't turn up at all. They, no, yeah, no. They, they sat that one out. But this isn't going to be the case this year. There's going to be real fights. And this year, I don't see a, a team that naturally would would get relegated. And you have Grobinha as a candidate, and I have Dago Pils. But uh, for for you, Dago Pils is higher, and for me, Grobinha is like number seven. So... Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how the lower league looks. And but, I mean, the transfer window is still open, so anything can happen. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there might be some talents that that have been plucked out from from a youth team that that uh, uh, you know Meta might suddenly have some yeah. the next big thing in in world football or. Anything can happen, and with young players, you never know. Um, with so many young players, you never know who uh, who's going to shine in in the season. Certainly. Um, and finally, we, I mean, we have big plans and we have grand ambitions for for this project. And uh, the goal of the podcast, of course, is to well, one, spread awareness of this fantastic league uh, among the English speaking population of the world. And two is to get uh, people to come and actually check it out for themselves because that's a whole different level of uh, experience. But then there's other things that that is on our mind, and and uh, we uh, uh, we think Virus League is great. I, I obviously think so, but you think so too. So it's absolutely well, true. Well, that's why I'm doing this podcast. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're not getting paid. <laughs> I've, I've, I've written a big book on, uh, on. Well, I've written a big text uh, on every team. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah, so, yeah, and there's something for everyone as well. You know, whether you're a bit nostalgic for when football was less about gloss and and ridiculous I mean, amounts of money. The, the sc- Skontos are a great European stadium. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's horrible it's and it's great. It's got its charms, and yeah, uh, yeah there's, there's, there's something special about. Us. I said it last time we spoke. Something special about summer football. Yeah. Uh, it's particularly in the evenings. Yeah. So yeah, you you. We, you can watch football in, during the summer. Yeah. You can drink beer in the stands. It's safe. It's friendly. Uh, it's unexpectedly to people high level. There's a good. There's a good talent. There's there's good. There's some good quality football that goes on. It's competitive, uh, and the there is a there's a number of grown teams that are starting to emerge. I mean, just being at RFS today for the Super Cup, seeing a massive stand, a new stand being built. Balmero FC, they've got a great new um, stadium yeah. as well. Uh, so it's, it's it's work in progress, but it's exciting work in progress and um, it can only get better. And, and I find that super interesting because, okay, you know, there are many iconic clubs in Europe and uh, the world, but the way they became iconic, that's all in the past. And uh, unless you're hundreds of years old, you've probably missed that. But but here, instead of reading about you know how an iconic derby derby emerged or how this particular club became the way it was, instead of reading about it, you get to live it, and I think that's fascinating. You get to debate the choices, you get to get excited or frustrated about you know business models or geeky stuff like that, or which players and what, or, and, and this is just wonderful. Yeah, the, yeah, this, uh, there there is. The, the the economics aspect is really exciting. Uh, what what players was what teams were what clubs were successful in the transfer market, even from sales, even from finding unpolished gems and turning them into diamonds yeah. and so on. I think there's there's something for everyone. Um, I, I love the economic side of of, yeah. of what's going on. How do you make money if you don't have a TV deal or match the attendance? That's an open question to everyone, but that's what the Virus League is dealing with, and successfully. And uh, um, we, the the latest, I think, uh, FIFA 
transfer report. Uh, according to that, uh, various Liga clubs bought five million euros worth of players, but sold nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's some big. I mean, there's a bit, some players have gone on to you know the Polish league, which is really growing. The Belgium leagues. Uh, you're seeing players have gone on to into Germany, Syria, uh, Syria, um, France, even Illich yeah. going from Norway to and so on. So it's it's such an exciting feeder league um, as well for nurturing and developing talent, um, particularly for you know teams. Uh, who want their players to get match time off season? I think the the calendar window, uh, the, the the calendar for the season, uh, is really good. Particularly when you know the majority of of football is played um, from well early autumn until early summer. You've got this. You've got a league that is keeping players you know competitive um, and giving them. Giving them minutes as well. Uh, yeah. So the point is, Pierce League is exciting for a variety of different reasons to a variety of different people, and there's a good chance that whatever gets you into football, and if I mean, if you're listening to this, uh, you probably have something, you know, an, a niche that is scratched by this championship. And we have many ideas of how to um, increase the level of exposure for it, um, but. Um, we need help. So if um, well, we need some support. Like, yeah, I think uh, we want to we want to increase the profile of this league. We want to get more people talking about it. We want to make it a well known, better league. And by do we can do that by improving this media experience as much as anything. Uh, what, how else do you think? We'll, well, so if um, we'll we'll put information on. Um, opportunities for collaboration or ways to support us uh, on, on social media and we'll be covering that in future episodes but uh, if um, I don't know this uh, sparks a uh, light bulb um, do also feel free to reach out to us if, um, if you have some ideas for how yeah. we can work together I think we're, we're looking for some sponsors at the moment we've got some potential exciting sponsors in the pipeline You've got to look at over 10,000 international visitors came to the league to watch games um, last year. Uh, so, yeah, we want to reach out to international audiences and um, we want to work with people that all and organizations that also want to reach out to international audiences. So. Yeah, so uh, let us know if you have any ideas. But uh, either way, thank you for listening. Thanks for tuning in. We are very excited for Reverse League 2024, which is going to be the best one yet. Best one yet. Definitely. And uh, yeah. we're very excited uh, for you to follow it with us.